welcome to Beginning Watercolor from the Durham Center for Seeing Your Life. And I would like to introduce myself. I'm Marie Crock, and I've been teaching watercolor for several years here, a number of years. And I have a lovely assistant, as every ma magician has to have one. <laughs> this is Janae, who's in charge of programs here at the center, who's talked me into this thing. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. But uh, before we start, I'd like to tell anybody who perhaps is using their own watercolors and does not have tube paint, if you're using pen paint, take this chance to wet, good and wet, your red, yellow, and blue, because it'll take a while for it to soften. The rest of us, thanks to uh, the center and Janae playing Santa Claus yesterday, <laughs> registrants got a bag full of stuff, including paper, three tubes of paint, red, red, yellow, and blue, a set of brushes, and a palette. And this is a, a small palette, and it'll do for us today. But um, what I often like to work, use with somebody who doesn't have expensive stuff are these plastic egg cartons. And um, you can make a good puddle in there, and colored puddle. We use Watercolor is so different from acrylic and oil because you use water, sometimes the paper's wet, sometimes the pigment, the paint, is more wet. And so we do four kinds of painting. Wet paint on wet paper, dry paint on wet paper, wet paint on dry paper, and dry paint on dry paper. Now, it does not mean dry, dry. And I'll get into explaining that later when we actually get to that part. But for now, here's what we're going to do together. Um, I have already drawn some lines for this picture. This is the picture we're, we're going to work on. Although I don't, I didn't like the rose for a first time painting. I didn't like it at all. So instead, we're just going to put leaves down at that side and um, do a painting much like that. And you'll notice there are little berries in here and fern leaves and the foxglove down here. So nothing has to be where it is. But there's a reason why I put it there. So you, you paint whatever. First thing you need to do is take your pencil that was in your pack and just draw some basic lines like I indicated here. I don't know if this is clear enough, but um, let me see. Um, I've indicated some leaves here, some leaves here, a stem, and a stem, and a stem. Okay? So, I don't know how well this does. Okay? Um, before we flip down, I just want to say that this is a lovely painting from one of the great students in the watercolor class here at the center from Robin Chasley. And now we'll flip down the, the camera so that we can get as well as we can close to this, seeing what's happening here. Okay. It's hard to see these lines, and I can't make them darker because you use a soft lead pencil to draw your lines. But if you press harder, if you press harder, you make an indent in your surface of your watercolor page. Anytime that you indent it, like even if I bang it with my fingers, sometimes there's the ends of the brushes that have like a cutoff place that's sharp. And using that, you can um, purposefully put in a couple lines. Let me put a couple better ones on there. Let's see, I need something sharp. I don't have it, but let's just say. I'm going to put a few scratches on here. And we'll see what happens when we put paint in there. Usually, those lines show up because the paint flows down into the damaged area. Okay, 
So watercolor is different from the uh, other mediums in a number of ways. One is you try to accentuate the effect of watercolor. It has to be fresh and flowing somewhat, you know, not everywhere, but a lot of it. You can see how the background was a soft kind of thing and all of this is soft. This is not finished, but I started painting into it. Okay, it still has the rocks in front to go. Um, the using of water. Secondly, watercolor dries lighter, not darker, lighter than it is on because it sits down into the page more as it sinks in and dries. And thirdly, we paint from light to dark. Most people who paint acrylics or oils paint dark to light. So anytime you want white, you really want to leave some white to make your pictures look fresh and alive. And um, sometimes they call those white specks uh, sparkles, <laughs> but whatever. The idea is not to cover the page completely like you're painting a house. It's to make it fresh and quick. Okay, the first thing is you need to have water. Whatever side is your dominant side, that's where you're going to place your water, your brushes, and your paint palette. Okay, and I wanted to tell you that there are three paint brushes that are kind of essential for watercolor. A nice big round one that comes to a point. A nice big flat one, this is a three quarter inch, that comes to a knife edge. And something we call a rigger or a liner. Um, it's a long skinny thing and that allows you to make long lines. You don't run out of paint, wet paint. But for today we're going to do this whole painting with what we were kindly given here with the, this little watercolor set. And um, as you can see, the biggest paint round brush on here is this thing. But we'll do what we can with it. It's going to take forever to wet that page. And I just wanted to say good morning uh, and thank you to everyone that registered. I see Chiquita Moore and Charles Moore are here. Good morning or rather good afternoon. Uh, good morning to Martha D. Berry. There's a couple more folks that we're expecting, but if you didn't register, that is totally fine. Maria is going to give you um, all of the keys, all the things that you need to be able to paint with us this morning, this afternoon. Uh, and again, you're welcome to replay this uh, at any moment uh, you'd like to throughout the day. We're also going to uh, work to, and I didn't tell Marie this, but she's going to be featured on our YouTube page. So this will also be available via YouTube, and uh, you can catch that and share that with family and friends. Okay, thanks. Wow. <laughs> That's my debut here. <laughs> okay, so on your dominant side, I'm right-handed. Um, I like to have a piece of uh, toilet tissue roll surrounded by paper towel. And I like Viva towel the best because it's absorbent and also it doesn't turn to mush. But uh, you need something to be touching your brush to. Some people use sponges, some people use diapers, cloths, rags, whatever. Okay. And so all of this is on the side. Right now, let's go to our paint. I, Janae was really great about going out of her way to get these because I told her the pan paints were not good enough. Um, but when you give yourself some paints to start your painting, fresh paints out of the tube, you want to um, put a little, let's just do a pea-sized thing on the edge of one of these. Notice how I scrape it off, and there it is, our blue, okay? I use cobalt blue for almost everything. It's my standard blue because it's so transparent. Works lovely. There are many different shades of blue, red, and yellow, as you can imagine. Okay, I've already done red, and this is a Grumbacher Rouge. And I have a very nice little lemon yellow here, transparent yellow. Those are good yellows. They're very, very um, transparent, which means colors show through each other. 
So put a little blob of that on, scrape it off, and be very careful when you put on the lid because if you had a lot of goo on there, paint, the next time you go to open it, you might not be able to. Okay, so they're all good and tidy. Okay, now take your biggest brush, which I guess is this, and make yourself beside your red, yellow, and blue, a little puddle in these little concavities, these little dips, okay? That's for our wet work. We're gonna start with the sky, and I feel a little handicapped with such a small brush because I usually work very big, but let's see what we can do. Okay, I'm gonna take some of the blue and put it into my puddle of water. Can you see this? Let me, let me move things so maybe you can get closer. It's going to be tough, but let's see. Okay, here's my blue paint, the blue pigment, and I'm going to move it into my thing of water. Always try not to get the goo down into the base of your brush because you won't be able to clean it out and it wastes your paint. The, worse than that, it's always dirty down in there. Okay, so you move it, and you cream it, and you mix it until it's well mixed. Okay, good enough. Now, because I'm demonstrating, I might take a shortcut here. But I like big brushes for this part, but you can use any brush. Um, we're going to wet the page to start out with. And you'll notice that I'm going across there and I'm putting in the water, starting at one side or the other, and working it in. If you back up and look at this sideways, you can see how the page starts shining in the light. I don't know if you can see this. Probably not. But that's one direction. You should do this in maybe three directions so it sinks in the paper gets wet and it's very evenly wet notice how i've had my paint i i went and um, used masking tape to tape my page down onto the backing of this tablet um, you can use cardboard masonite anything you want Look at the side against the light, and you can see where there's puddles, where it's all shiny. And when it's starting to look velvet, that's where the water has gone inside of it. Okay, now we're going to go back the other way again. Some, one teacher I had once said, you sing a certain song while you're doing this, and you don't stop until the song is over. The point is, you want to have a well-soaked watered paper evenly. Okay, now let's look at this and see if we've got any dry spots. There's one there. And let's go like this and work it out. Okay, from my point of view, when you look at this, it's shiny equally all over and I've soaked it real good. Hard to do with a little brush, but you can do it. Okay, now I'm going to take that blue that we already mixed up into a puddle. I call them puddles, I don't know. But this is wet work. And I'm just going to apply it onto here as well as I can. I'm going to stay away from the places where I put um, a mark where the picture is going to be because I want the sky to be up above, but I don't want to get the blue down where I want other colors. Why is that? Well, the point of it is it's watercolor. Every color shows through. It's transparent. So if you're going to, if you are going to um, paint the page blue and then you want to put yellow on there, it's going to turn green. Blue and yellow make green. If you want, 
kind of get some more color on there. And I'll try to make it flow in evenly. It's hard with a small brush, but you can do it. Okay, and you don't want to go too long at this because what will happen is instead of the nice color flowing, what you have is um, streaks. So we've got streaks. So I'm going to swish my brush, touch it to the paper towel. Now I'm going to come and I'm just going to work out some of these in between spots here. And I'm going to get my brush wet and kind of work it in there. Okay, now let's hope this works. So I'm going to flow the water every which way and try to get my streaks out of there. And they should disappear pretty well. And again, if you had a bigger brush, you would get less of the, all that streaking. Trying to get, what if we made some blue down here where the shadow is going to be? I'm going to put some in there. You'll notice that I'm not always being real careful because at this stage, you're trying to make it interesting, but nothing to show up. Okay. While it's drying, I'm going to mix up some green or I'm going to show you how to use wet paint on the page and let them mix on here together on the page, not mix them up ahead, which means I have to start with my yellow, take a little bit of the yellow into the water, and where the sunlight's going to hit this, this is a little too, always have a tissue in your hand when you're watercoloring, it's very helpful. Notice if the brush is too full of water, I just suck some out of the very base of the brush like that, because I didn't want too much water to go on there. I just want the leaf to kind of be yellow where the sun is hitting it. We're not worried about details right now, because they come in later. So let's see what we can do here. This is not good. If you use too much water, I forgot to do this, uh, what will happen is it'll flow out and you'll lose too much of your shape. So, okay. We've got some yellow on there. I think I might mix a little bit more yellow in there, make it stronger, and put some more on. Okay, a little bit stronger, not too wet. Okay, yeah, I hope you can see this. It's, it's very hard to um, use what we've got going here to create this. Okay, um, at the same time, I'm going to do blue, and the reason is Blue and yellow make green. I'm going to suck out the extra water. I don't want it running all over my page. Now, what happens when I put blue on the edge of the, these things? Well, let's see. It isn't mixing as much as I'd like, so I'm going to take my brush, and what I did was I, I cleaned it off a little bit. If you wipe your brush, you can pick up what you don't like. Okay. And I can mix these together right here on the page. I see the green coming. Looks good. It'll have some more details later. It's just like right now. It's got to be
Okay, let's see what I can do about running this. I touch my thing, swish it, clean my brush, touch it. Now I'm going to blend in a little. Well, I think I'd like a little more yellow colors in those leaves, so I'm going to actually do that here and there. may look terrible to you right now, but when we get the details on there, oops, I have a bloom here, and I don't want a bloom there. I could leave it, but I'm not going to. I'm going to touch the Kleenex to it to get up that little extra bloom. Okay, let me get a little bit stronger blue here. When I say stronger blue, I mean I still have to make it creamy. It can't be on, you never put watercolor on like paste. Because unlike acrylic and oil, it doesn't harden permanent. It will always stay there waiting for the moisture in the air to make it explode and drip and do all sorts of things. Okay, this is what we're doing so far. Oops, I have another bloom right here. Can you see it right there? Look. Okay. See it right there? Okay, I'm going to touch that a little bit and get rid of that room. Okay, let's put that aside. And I want to talk to you about paper while that's drying. Because the paper you have been given for this class the people who registered is very good paper. It's called Fabriano Artistico and it's one of the best papers made in France. The reason why you want to use good paper is they're made with wood pulp. The cheapest, cheapest, cheapest paper, it's everywhere and it's really cheap, is made with, I mean, these are made with rag. Um, cotton rag, whereas the cheap paper is made with wood pulp, and that just handles your paint and water differently. Here's another really, this is some um, Fabriano Artistico. You want the cold press as opposed to the hot press. I have here another very common and wonderful paint um, type of paper called Arches. And this green is cold press. They also make it in hot press, which is shiny and slippery. And can you see the pink on that? Anyway, so that's hot press. But uh, cold press is really great. And another good one that's out now is this aquarelle from Windsor Newton, which is a very good paper. The reason you want the good paper, like I said, is it just handles the paint better. This is cheap Strathmore. It's made with wood pulp. And it does all your color kind of just goes down into it and disappears. And it doesn't flow right either. So I'm just going to say it's not important what brushes you have, how many brushes, how many special brushes you have. What's important is to use to paint and good paper, okay? Not this. Canson is also not very good, but you'll find that that's available. Um, okay, so that's about the paint. Now, there's plenty of good, what you're using is student grade, but it's decent. Tube paint, not pan paint. If you get the more professional type of the type paints, they cost more, but guess what? They really go further. They have more intense pigment in there. And also, the better quality pigments don't fade in the light and so on. They, they hold their color better. Um, okay, so we're back to this. Let's see if I've said, oh, and as far as these pellets, Yes, I did show you this is a good one to have, these um, egg cartons. Just remember that some of them connect up 
if you make a puddle in here, it's going to run over there. But um, that's the egg carton. And I'm ready to show you the next step. And what I did was, um, oh, back up, since I've got a few moments while it's drying. When you sketch, try to use a soft pencil, which like, I think this is a 6B. The Bs are the soft, the Hs are hard. Reason why is the hard pencils dig into the paint, the paper more. Um, when you erase, don't use those pink erasers or the ones on the end of a pencil. Uh, this is one that's called a kneadable eraser and it's a gummy little thing and you just snap it around a little bit to clean it and you make an edge like that and you can erase a line any way you want. Or you can use some of those good German erasers that are white that, that they sell in the craft stores. They even sell them at Michael's. <laughs> okay, this is one that I got ready because I knew it would take time for our picture to dry. See, it's still wet. You can see, oh, I forgot to talk to you about the weight of the paper. You can see a slight bubbling in here. I don't know if you can tell, but um, that's because this is 140 pound. It's the weight of the paper. They sell 300 pound watercolor paper, which is hugely expensive and probably not anything you'd want it in the beginning. It doesn't bubble. They sell like 90 pound and 80 pound and don't use that either because it's such a bubbly mess. You can't control the, the uh, puddles of water in it. Even with this, you see that it's uneven, but as it dries, it'll tighten up again because I had masking tape around it when it was dry and then I wetted it. So now when it dries, it's going to tighten up again. But it's still wet and you know when something's dry, when the paint is really dry, whoops, because if you put your hand on it and it feels cool, Oh, this is a little cool, so there's dampness in that. I did that earlier. Um, it should be absolutely not cool. Then you know it's totally dry. But this is going to work for our next step. And um, for what we want to do is we're going to start painting the... Uh, yeah, we'll paint the fern leaves and these leaves and some red berries right next. And I also have to show you a few things about how to handle your paints uh, to use them stronger colored. Supposing I want something a little bit stronger for green, I'm going to take some of my paint. Oops, I already did it wrong. You should start with your lightest color first. I'll swish that out and clean it. Yeah, there we go. Let's mix some yellow. Now this is creamy, and I'm going to put it on there, and I don't know if you can see how it's sitting up above there. You don't want to use it like that. And same with the blue. I'm going to mix them together to make a green and make sure that they're plenty strong, but there's no lumps, paste, or anything. It's more like, if I go like that, do you see how the water makes it kind of move? That's how you want it. Okay, let's just say I'm going to use the tip of the brush and go like that. I'm going to put on here a fern going over there. And I'm going to make these fern leaves like this. Try not to make them all the same. And 
and they should get littler and littler. Whoops, I need more. I still want it to be pretty colors. Okay, so we've got our fern on there. And I also want to paint a little of this stronger color, which is what I'm calling a dry paint, onto the leaves here. Might be a little bit too soon to do that. Yeah, it is. Okay, I want another fern going over from this side, but some of it is going to disappear behind that flower, so I have to make sure I Okay, um, so much for the fern. Switch out my green. Now I'm going to do something like I did my green color. I'm going to do the red. And I'm going to do it in this, the opening right next to the red. Okay, I want to make sure that I'm using it pretty intense, but that it flows. It has this wiggleness. I go like that and the paint sort of draws back into itself, and there are no clumps on my brush, okay? So let's put in some berries. I'm gonna leave a little shine place on the berries. It's very important that you don't make them all the same, and they're not gonna be all the same distance or size or anything. Let's see, maybe something coming over here. The reason why I say that is you don't want everything to be uniform like boom, boom, boom in a row. Let's just say I'm going to have a stem coming up here and maybe these two will be real close. Okay, use the tip of your brush to, when you need to, otherwise you use the full brush. And Janae is trying to show you that. I'm going to paint a couple berries over here so that you get what I'm doing. And I have to mix up some more paint. So again, I want to make sure that it's creamy enough that it draws in on itself when I go like that, but it'll and if I don't have enough paint on there, it's going to disappear. Remember the thing about watercolor, it's going to dry much lighter than what it goes on as. Okay, so that's our red berries. And unless we want some more paint, we'll probably, we might want some purple later, which would be red and blue. I noticed that, um, can you get me one page off of there, please? My lovely assistant. <laughs> Um, I don't want yellow right here. It must have fallen over there. So I'm going to do that. Okay. Um, so far, so good. Just so you see where we're heading, now that the paper is more or less dry, we're not going to put on the rose, but we're going to put on some leaves. We've done the ferns and berries. And we're going to paint the blue foxglove in there. Okay. So again, take your largest round brush, which for you is just this one, right? Does that okay. number on there? Hmm? Are those numbered? 
the numbers differ with different companies. Exactly. So it's just size we're after. This, by the way, is a number um, eight bestie. What is it? Number 12 bestie. Bestie is a very cheap brand, inexpensive, but it's very good. I started with this brand my first class, and I still like them. They're, they stay coming to a point when it's full of paint and wet, and yet it's inexpensive. Um, you might try that, but what we've got is this, and that's what we'll use, and that's fine. I just want you to remember to use, a lot of times use it on the, the full stroke of the brush, not always dab, 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 like you're an oil colorist or something. We're not Monet, Monet here, we're more like, I don't know who, okay. Okay, um, I want to paint the blue foxglove next. So let's go ahead and get us some, some blue that is strong colored. And we'll put down the first thing. I'm gonna get some more water in there so that I don't run out. Okay, too runny, but the first time we do it, it's okay if it's lighter. Okay, so here's my foxglove stand, and I know, hmm, a foxglove has these They have a circle at the end. They're they're like downward facing things like that, and they're bigger at the bottom. And some of them come forward. They aren't all facing you to the side. Some of them are forward like that. So let's put some circles on the bottom of those, and let's make them get smaller as we go. I need one coming forward there. Okay. And as you get to the top, they're really small. And there might be just a few buds at the top of that. Okay, this is kind of going to do us for now. Let me get one thing fixed. Need more there. Okay, so because watercolor is transparent, you can't hope to cover a beautiful color on top of something you've already painted. That's why I left that part of the leaf missing right there. Okay, while that is drawing, Let's go back to our green paint. And this time, it's okay if you have some blue in your color, in your brush, because, okay, this time I'm gonna make it a little wetter because what I want to show you is using wet colors. And we don't have any blue wet, so let's make blue. Okay, so I'm gonna have yellow when I want it wet. I'm going to have some blue when I want it wet. Whoops, that's too much green. And then the green. Okay. Let's take these leaves that are now pretty dry and I'm going to go with my yellow wet puddle and I'm going to pick up some and I'm just going to put some on the leaf where I want it. Since the paper is now dry, it's not going to run around and change like it did before. It's going to keep its place pretty good. Okay. All right. At the same time, I'm going to use some of this blue that I, I mixed up, and I'm going to take that on there and just put it where I want more of a darker leaf. You 
can start seeing that we're getting some definition here. Can they see that, Janae? I think they can. Let's get a close I'm going to swish my brush, clean it off, and try to um, mix that a little. Notice how I swished my brush clean. I touched it to dry it, and then I swashed at the edge of that paint that was a line, and I didn't want it to be a line. I wanted the colors to mix like that, and that causes them to mix better. Okay, let me get some more blue here, and let's see what happens if I go like that. And some blue over here. Okay, some blue here. It's in the background, so I made it pretty darn blue. And I don't like that, so I'm going to swish my blush, brush, clean it off, dry it, and now I'm going to go like this, swish it, dry it. I'm going to sweep down in there to kind of soften some of that blue so it's not so strong. It's going to, if you leave it that strong, the eye's going to go not what you want. Okay. Alrighty. Now here's a place I want to blend. And this is where, I, where it comes in where it's lovely about watercolors. What if I put a little green mixed in there? Well, it flows. It mixes. You can play with it, in other words. Because it's dry paper at this point, it's not going to run away with itself. Whoops, tissue time. Always keep your tissues. Okay, I splattered. All right, so we're starting to get a little bit of definition in our, our leaves. And... I'm going to keep playing with it till it's kind of pretty. For right now, Okay, that's more of a wet technique. I'm going to move this a little bit. It's still a little too strong, so I'm picking some up, cleaning my brush, drying it off, and moving it out. Okay, I think we could handle some green in there. So what happens when I go like that? The paint paper gets a little dry. So that now, if we put a center vein on there, or anything of the sort, it'll probably stay. Just a little definition. Some veins on the green. Let's see, veins over here, a little detail there. Those little bits of details aren't important, just nice to have a little bit of it. I'm going to take this green and I want to make it a little darker, so I'm going to take a, just a little bit of blue in there and mix it in with a little blue so it's a darker green. This is what I'm going to come up with on the uh, stem here. And up here at the top, some of those are green actually, because the buds haven't opened yet. So I put green up there. And let me see, what, how could I make this brown? I want brown stems on these berries. Well, you get brown or mud anytime you mix all three
primary colors together. So I just put a bunch of red in here. And because it was so powerful, it overdid it. But here's what happens when you have equal amounts of red, yellow, and blue. It's kind of like a reddish. Let me get this out of there. Okay, it's very muddy. Do you see that? It's brown because it's red, yellow, and blue. I don't want it very wet, so what I'm going to do is touch my base of my brush to the Kleenex and it'll suck off the extra. So now I'm going to come out there. Just a little bit of brown on those coming up. Remember that it's going to dry lighter, so you know, have to have enough on there to make it show up. take some of this one away. The beauties of watercolor is very uh, immediate. Notice how I just lifted some of that. It was too dark and too wide. So I took it away and just added a little bit. Okay, so we've got our berries in there. The start of our leaves and the ferns, okay. I want to get rid of this red that's in the middle, so what am I going to do? Well, I'm just going to use my Kleenex and get it out of there. And so what I'm going to do now is make the leaves, the long, delicate leaves on that foxglove, okay? So what do I need? A clean brush, swish it, touch it. I need some water for the yellow. And I need plenty of, pay of pigment mixed in. Okay. Not sure how well you can see because Ideally, this camera would be right up on me, but I don't think we can get that, so. Okay, I'm going to start out with yellow on the leaves. I always start with the lighter color, and I can always, like, put green over it or whatever, but um, I want to show you how to use a long sweep of a, a round brush to do this. all the way to there and so far so good so let me mix some yellow in another container with a little blue in there so it's kind of a green blue green now I'm going to go on the other side of that leaf and get thinner as I go okay Alrighty, let's go back to yellow, clean your brush because it's yellow and I want to make one that comes up behind all this. And we're going to ask that yellow leaf to show up. Be careful not to touch your blue because it's still kind of wet and it'll run, so you need to leave it a little bit of white showing. Don't come with one wet color touching another wet color unless you want them to run together. Right now, I want 
my blue green and this yellow to run together so I'm going to come up beside it and do something like that okay and put a little bit more on this one okay and let's put in let's just say one more coming down like that okay quite see that leaf going up there so not to worry because when we put all our details on at the end we can make whatever we want show up okay this is good now it's time some of those lovely foxglove some of the lovely foxglove need another coat. This is called glazing. Something you can do in watercolor where you put a thin layer and it, we did it right here where a thin layer of one color goes over another color and they both show through because they're transparent. Okay, what I'm going to do now is the same blue, but I want to kind of show certain areas of the foxglove that have details like the center, I'm going to use more of a creaminess. Do you see how it's creamy like that? It is creamy, it, it flow, it, it moves. And I'm just going to hit certain places so that it looks more like the throat of those foxglove um, openings. The flower of the foxglove has a long throat and then a, a bell-like on the end. So we need to make that happen. And it's wrinkly. It's not round perfect. So I'm going to add a little bit of darkness to it. We'll do this better once we um, once it gets drier. Okay. That's about all I can do with that until it dries some more. So now I'm going to go back and I want to make some stronger features on my leaves and maybe some rock color. Okay, um, first let's get some strong leafy blue-green here kind of blue-green. Okay, it's kind of strong because you see how it moves when I go like that. It's not a puddle, but it's creamy. So what will happen when I take these dry leaves over here and I go like this and I run it down there and make some veins in there Maybe do the edge of the leaf here and there. Incorporate all that fuzz. Doesn't matter if you hit it perfectly. What matters is that you're very free and loose about this. Okay. There's some leaves. It needs a little bit of something on the side there. I sure hope that this is focused so you can see what I'm doing. Just here and there. Okay. Let's start with this leaf. Okay, it kind of comes down like that. 
And I want to have some more veining in there, some more definitions, but not perfectly uniform everywhere. Make them varied. This one needs some veins, and it needs a sweep around here to make the edge more precise. We've got the big leaves here. This one just begs for something, so I'm going to run down right down the middle. Like that. This one's too wet. all we can do until it dries. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of shadow stuff down here at the bottom. Um, if this brown were extremely dry, I'm going to suck my water out of my brush. I, I dip it in the brown. I'm going to dry out my brush at the base like that. And I'm just going to use it's a dry brush technique, it's called. Suck out the extra water and just add a little bit of soil down here. But because of the paper being this lovely cold press, what you find happen is it picks up the roughness of the paper. So, um, let me show you from this direction what we've got so far. Okay. When we do watercolor, a lot of times we use hair dryers to dry the um, stuff faster. Or you can do my technique that I do, which is oftentimes out of pure orneriness, laziness perhaps. I don't want to wait. So I, I will paint on more than one paper, more than one picture. Just while well, one's drying, I can do something with another one. Okay, everything's done on this paper that I want, except the very finest lines. Let's compare. Okay, forget the rose, but um, this was my original thing. Or even better, this one. I wanted to hide the rose. I like the foxgloves in this one. Because I, I actually added some black on there. You can make black if you use blue in, say, orange. Uh, certain colors make a better black, but I'm going to try to make black with what I have here. Because I want a little bit of darkness in here and a little bit of darkness detailing around the foxglove. So let's see what we can do with the three paints we were given here. I need some water. Okay. Now let's start with some creamy yellow, some creamy red, which makes sort of an orange. Okay. And I'm going to mix in a lot of creamy blue with that. 
and see if it makes it black. My favorite black is actually indigo blue with burnt sienna. There, that's about as black as we're going to get it with these three paints. Yeah. Okay. So we have some black mixed up. And um, notice some of these, some of my flowers are still wet. So if yours are wet, you need to wait until they dry. Um, this one's wet, this one's wet. I'm going to show you on some of the, what I'm doing on some of the ones that are dry. But I just want to have a black line around there, if I can get it. And a black throat. And a couple ridges on the box glove. just a touch of black features and a few black lines there. It's not a true black, it's more of a brown that I'm using, but oh well. The idea is to make it look like a foxglove. Now what we've got to do is let it dry, and um, if there's any more dark area that you want, like I think I want some more dark over here, I'm going to use this color for it, like this area around the thing. I'm going to put a little shadow down here. like to make some purple too, which would be adding the red and the blue together. Okay, there's a purple. But I want it very watery because it's just going to be a little bit of shadow. A wet, runny purple. Okay, and I want to get the shadow right down under here.
Okay, so um, the last thing you want to do will be to take your tiny brush and sign your name because this is your piece of art and hopefully you had fun doing it. The most important thing is to kind of be free and easy and have fun with the paints. Um, watercolor doesn't want to obey you at first and if you learn how to use that to your advantage it makes some marvelous fun and some marvelous paintings. I'm just going to use my so-called black which is actually brown and I tend to use just my initials but I've been doing this initial stuff since high school so there it is. But um, the only thing I would do with this differently is I would wait till it dried and paint a little better on those um, box gloves. But that's the painting for today and I hope I can't tip it too much because it's wet. But um, oh good, okay. Yeah. So you can back this up as I understand it. You can go back and see it again and again and try to, you know, whatever you missed, see if you can catch it. And maybe we'll figure out a way to get it closer next time. Hopefully there will be a next time and I'm glad that you came on board. Uh, don't worry if it isn't like mine because gosh knows you could paint much better. But um, <laughs> this is what happened this time. And I wish you the best of luck with your watercolor. Keep at it. The most important thing is not how many brushes you have or what the money you put into it. It's time, how often you paint, and use good pa paint and tube paint. Good paper, tube paint. Those are the important keys for really good. But if you don't spend the time with it, you won't master the water aspect. And um, get yourself always some Kleenex, paper towel, again, Viva, very good. Uh, the brands of water, of, oh, and I will tell you that art just comes in three different ways. You can buy big sheets of this stuff that are 32 by 40 inches, and then you rip or cut it down. You can buy it as tablets, or you can buy it as blocks, and all of these good papers come in this way. And a block is all glued together, and then when you paint on it, you don't have to tape it or anything, you paint on it, and when you're all done, you take a little table knife or something, and you lift off the top layer, and you paint on the next one. So that's a block. They cost a little more, but they're convenient. And again, Art Juice is a good brand. It's cotton fiber as opposed to the wood pulp. Then we have Fabriano Artistico, which also comes as a tablet. That's what you were given. And it comes as something aquarelle, which is a block. Always I would recommend to start with 140 pound cold press. The other good paper that's nowadays available is Windsor Newton, which is an aquarelle as well. And it, nowadays this kind of paper is very good too. If you go online to Cheap Joe's in Boone, North Carolina, you can get something called Kilimanjaro and that's also good paper and pretty reasonable too. So, um, and if you pay attention to the sales, if you get painting a lot um, in the winter, a lot of times they'll have special sales that you can get some good deals on things. That's when most of us that paint continuously tend to um, get our supplies. Okay, looking at this paint, this picture behind me, since I have a few minutes, I don't know what time it is. Definitely. We're doing good? Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know if you can tell what's beautiful about this is it uses all these watercolor techniques.
Can you tell how the sky was painted with a wet paper, causing the colors to flow and mix? Okay. The um, background trees had the colors put on wet on dry paper so that they kind of mingled a little bit. And then, and also some of this foreground pink was put on wet. Then when it was dry, <coughs> you can see that somebody went along and painted this tree, these trunks, these trees here. Looks like the leaves on them were put on by sponges, possibly. So the details were added later. And these little bit of shadow details, that was sort of a wet paint just put on as a shadow. But this uses techniques that's very appropriate for watercolor. And um, I thank you. And that's it for me. Janae, do I do anything? other than signing off, <laughs> and we'll see. I'll be analyzing this because I'm sure there are things that I could have done better. Oh my gosh, first of all, I wanna give a virtual round of applause. If you guys could just hit that hand clapping sign, say some nice words. I'm gonna read them <laughs> off uh, as I'm online now. Virtual hand claps always work, but we just wanna thank Marie for doing this today. Um, she's a master artist, um, <laughs> and I had the privilege to make a couple runs to a lot of our members' homes. And uh, she had paintings everywhere and gardens everywhere. Just a beautiful oasis. So she is a artist through and through. And we just want to thank you for being here today. Again, like she mentioned, you can play this back. You can watch this. If you missed a step, you can rehearse this over and over and over again. This is here to stay on our Facebook page. And as I mentioned a little bit earlier, we're actually going to put this on our YouTube page that we um, just got back uh, up and going. So even if you're not on Facebook, you can always go to youtube.com, type in our information, and it'll be right there on our home page. Another thing I wanted to say was Durham Center for Senior Life at this time, you know, with us being closed, we have been offering so many different things, and we've been so gracious uh, to the folks that have um, donated or decided they wanted to give during this special time. We've had folks give checks. We've had folks give in-kind um, such as food and things like that. If you wanted to donate to this today, uh, the cost of this would have technically been about $22 per person. Uh, and so we would love to have you partner with us so that we can continue to do things like this. So I, I ask you to join us partnering with ECSL to uh, write a $22 check if you enjoyed this class and plan to participate again. We'd love to continue offering it and appreciate you for coming alongside and partnering with us to be able to offer this, okay? So thank you so much. And we wanna thank again, Marie Kroc for all of her uh, dedication and hard work. She's been here a Happy couple of times. Happy to, yeah, awesome, I, awesome. I forgot to tell you one thing. When you clean, swish your brushes. Don't leave them dirty. Swish them and squeeze them in a paper towel. Don't pull, because you'll pull out the things and do that until it comes squeezes clean. Never let your brushes sit in the water face down because on a watercolor brush, if you don't leave it exactly nice, if it's bent or something when it dries, it's going to ruin the brush forever. So keep, take care of your brushes. They should last your whole life. <laughs> okay. Um, and I'm just going to read out a few things here. Um, I got a chance to see you guys. Come on in, let's see if I can do it like this. Let's see. Yeah, that's easier. Okay. Wow, we had a lot of folks join us. Thank you, Chiquita and Charles Moore, uh, Martha D. Berry, Anna Marie. Hi. Thanks for joining us. Alvanya, Karen, uh, Anna Marie again with a thumbs up. Thank you so much. Martha says, thank you for sharing your talent. Uh, and so we just, again, appreciate her. And again, you're able to watch this live uh, on our Facebook page, and it'll soon be on our YouTube page, okay? Check us out probably probably by the end of the week. All right, thanks guys. And next time we'll do another picture. We won't spend time on all the beginning stuff because you know it now. <laughs> and and uh, hopefully we'll be able to figure out how to make it a little bit closer. 
And I think when I review it, I may see that that's necessary. Bye.